Hi all, welcome to another Chess24 Banter Blitz. It's approaching 11.30. I'll just quickly show you the voucher code King's Crusher. Uh, you can get a 15% discount with this voucher code. So that's King's plural Crusher. So you can get to play, uh, play even the world chess champion, Magnus Carlsen, as well as other uh, grandmasters and amazing players generally. So that voucher code Kings Crusher, bear that in mind. And as a premium member, you just come 10 to 15 minutes uh, or earlier uh, and you challenge the streamer and it goes on our challenge list. And then we can just pick off those challenges uh, when the stream starts. So it's a great format. Okay, let's go to the uh, challenges um, now. I hope audio and visual is okay. We'll go to the challenges. And a very strong challenger, probably after blood from last week. <laughs> Shelling Ford. Okay, he's let me play white. Or I don't know, the system assigned me white. Good news. Okay, I uh, hope he's ready. Okay, English opening. Put the volume up a bit. Okay, I think I have sometimes good games against them with this uh, English opening. All right, so I have played like this before except in double pawns maybe that's maybe there is something wrong with this line I didn't totally uh, investigate it um, but uh, see a4 b4 I'm thinking maybe it's worth clamping down actually on a4 from black there uh, yeah, if I want a castle without bishop h3, it's so f4 here, it's Breton f5. So my rook protecting, okay, the pawn. So f5 looks uh, like a, a threat. Um, so some pressure is released, I think, from h3. All right, so here, okay, if I play this. Knight g4 does seem dangerous. Um, f5 here looks as though he's blocked in that bishop. Bishop takes, rook takes. Alright, oh, that's interesting. <coughs> Knight f4 or d4. Knight d4 to f5. That looks nice. <clears throat> uh, knight f5 looks nice, or knight takes. Okay, eliminate this guy. <clears throat> Maybe c5 for queen a6. It's a dangerous attack, but uh, there's queen a6 or cd. Rook f5. That knight's pretty dangerous, potentially. I can threaten. Again, bishop e5, potentially. Okay, can I get away with... Mm, bishop e5 here. Oh, that would simplify. Um, or bishop h3. Bishop h3, does it incur too much risk? Maybe I could, I could kind of eliminate this first. That looks okay. <clears throat> I 
<clears throat> so rook f7 or b4 let me just try and open up the king over oh, there's rook g3 this is dangerous rook g3 ah. okay um rook f6 tempo and then queen c4 if just try and exchange off I don't think there's rook g1 or attacking that rook g1 just yet. Okay, um, bishop d7 looks good for bishop c6. Um, is it too slow? There's rook g3 happening. Um, b4 for queen c5. Oh, there's rook g3. It's, it's scary. Oh. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if this is too slow, but I'll, I'll try it. That is pinned, that pawn. And there's always, unfortunately, he's getting out with maybe queen c6. Check. Just. Just go with the check with queen c6. <clears throat> Wait, just get the queens off. And um, just stop this rook for a moment. And put the bishop on. Well, we'll exchange off a pair of rooks. Okay, I'm getting a bit short on time. 1 minute 33. It's not terrible. It's not like a three minute game. If I can just exchange off the rooks, I'll be happier. Um. Get this pawn. And try for this one on E5. I've still got a minute 15. King E6, Rook D3. This looks pretty clear. Get the pawn over. Okay, there's a potential for losing the rook, of course. If I, I don't want to keep my pieces unprotected. If I move them to ridiculous places to have them unprotected, I was trying to avoid that. Get the king over. This pawn can also. And this has got stalemate trick. This pawn can also go to a6. King can go into d6. Or over here. Over here. King c5. b5. It looks pretty crushing. It's over. Well, I'm always nervous playing Shelling. It's going to be resourceful. Okay. Well, thanks. <laughs> I, I just, I just feel terror when playing him. I don't know if that comes across, even if, even if I seem to be winning. There's the sense of terror. Okay. <laughs> okay I, I, I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm just, I'm just. Uh, uh, <laughs> this, the sense of cautious terror. Okay. Okay. Anyway. Uh, that jet saw has been dangerous in the Tarish as well. I'm not, I'm not, I think jet was underrated. So we've had a Tarish, which I lost horribly once against jet <laughs> And, um, let's see. Uh, yeah, uh, I think it did go along these lines before. And, uh, but anyway.
So I wanted to play David Norwood in this simul, and I was winning against David Norwood, and he he did know that I was kind of he did kind of sense I was a, a warrior. He says like, why, why are you worried? <laughs> it's, I don't know. It's just that I don't think there's. I I don't believe in certainty. I think, especially on the chessboard, there's there's a lot of resources. That the the stronger the opponent, I always believe they're going to be more slippery and resourceful, and that generally is reinforced. Uh, you know, so uh, I I uh, yeah, this cautiousness sometimes. And the reverse happens if I'm playing, you know, much lower rated players. It can can be a bit more. Uh, just okay, you make more um, assumptions naturally. Um, maybe sometimes I am even me overconfident. But um, now against, um, I I think also I, I have actually been in in over the board games. Ridiculous things happen to me uh, psychologically. Uh, like I was playing. I am not once, and I played this ridiculous move in the open just to try and surprise him. Something like knight a4. It's ridiculous decentralization. So these kind of panics, they just uh, that's probably why I'm not cut out for high level chess. This this psychology pressure uh, for me. Um, sometimes I'm I'm uh, yeah okay, but anyway. So so let's see d double rooks. Uh, and uh, I, I, okay, so b4. Oh, actually, isn't there knight d5 here? He's blocked. No, he hasn't blocked d5. Okay, so this is dangerous, right? This is officially getting uh, a pain. This position. Uh oh, and I can't do that. Uh oh, hang on. This is not good at all, is it? Can I exchange off queens? Who's he got? Bishop b4. Queen takes b4. Okay, bishop b4, queen takes b4. Um, I'm hoping this is not entirely, obviously, terrible. Um, I got to look out for bishop b4. Maybe. Okay, so bishop b4 doesn't exist here, but I think I have to unpin. It exists there. If I unpin with this move, that pawn, I can take with the pawn now. Or queen c1. So that's probably good news. Can I play uh, knight f3 to g5? Knight g5. Um Yeah, so I make things epically terrible by panicking. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy says don't panic, but sometimes I do make things totally epically ridiculously uh disastrous when I don't need to, need to do that. Don't don't need to do that. I think chess tries to I think sometimes teach us that not to panic, to try and be uh uh, resourceful and logical, even if the positions look scary, and especially I think computers teach us that that they they don't care playing computers. Obviously, have no emotions. They don't care playing scary looking positions. So the, the nerve of computers to play like um, you know allowing their king to be exposed and stuff like that is is something maybe that's that's interesting. The um, hell chess could be played in theory, but in practice, because of the emotions. Uh, I'd rather have an attack sometimes than extra material. So uh, I don't know if e4 is um, possible here. Is that possible to sort of? My pawn's too shaky. I'm going to find out. Yeah, this this is a bit of a risk, isn't it? Um, the pawns are a bit shaky. If I'm thinking rook d2, knight e5, but the bishop's holding d2. If there's an undermining with knight e5 at some point, the act of undoubling the pawns in theory, it's it seems like something to do to undermine the pawn chain in theory. It seems in theory as a, a thematic move. 
I want to undouble and weaken this pawn chain. But tactically, these pawns are now that's a frontal attack on that pawn. Okay, have I got bishop f5 here? Um, does that keep some pressure going in this position? The blockade square c3 doesn't seem terrible. Um, he's really encouraging me forward. Okay, on this occasion, I will. Ah, oh, there's h6. Oh, that's not going to work. Uh, if h4, h6, and then if bishop moves, then knight h4, and, and, and my paranoia about losing all my pawns is, is coming true. But so, so rook, rook d2 maybe for d5. Uh, if h6, bishop e3, if knight e5, I can still take because the rook's protected firmly at the moment. So bishop f5, g takes. I'm looking forward to f6. I think overall, I'm threatening d5 potentially. Yeah, the queen's actually supporting e5. Okay, now he's on these other light squares like e4. Can I, if I play this, then there's potentially for taking and then, no, no, actually, that's okay. Can I play rook e1 and get away with it? That's a question. Rook e1. Can I get away with rook e1? I hope I can. I want to support bishop e4 and ideally d5 to get these pawns moving. I guess I'm um, okay. What am I? What am I worried about here? <laughs> Bishop e3. There's queen f3. That was one thing I was worried about, which is now on the board. This idea of queen f3. Uh, so, and if he ever took there, then he's got a magnificent pass pawn there. So this is quite serious stuff. Um. Yeah, maybe there's rook f2 to evict the queen. I have to be careful here how I evict this queen. Takes. Sorry, queen f3, rook f2. Okay, can I play rook f1 anyway now to stop queen f3? There's no knight e5 yet. The bishop is holding d2. Right, and this, okay, can I do this? To just give the possibility for a queen going across to g3. Mind you, then I'm lifting that blockade. Okay, he's putting more pressure on the position. There is also knight e5 now emerging. Ah, oh, it's getting a bit scary, basically. Can I play for f6 or queen g3, f6? Oh, he's on this pawn. Okay, f6 here. Oh, I don't like losing pawns, though, for a nebulous attack. Maybe... That's oh, giving them past pawn potential with c3. On the other hand, maybe I can set up a blockade here. Can I just take this guy just to resolve these dangerous past pawns? Oh, hang on. All right, I'll nab this one. The clock advantage reassures me a little bit that he's only got like one second. I'm not going to get mated in one second, right? You'd think. Oh, God. <laughs> I shouldn't say things like that. <laughs> because usually <laughs> they have a habit of coming true. If I guess it, you should never say something like, I'm not going to be mated in one second. For me, that comes true quite a lot. <laughs> oh dear, okay, thanks, yeah, okay, but tense again. Okay, always blame the mouse. <clears throat> okay. It's English opening, Botvinnik system, a reassurance of oh, Botvinnik's behind this system a little bit played it a bit world champion authority authoritative mm. can I play h4 for h5 can I just provoke some weaknesses like f6 because pawns don't go backwards so I'm hoping f6 
and in the long run might regret the uh, he might regret the light square weaknesses. So a provo provocation here for f6. And there's d6 now. Mind you, I haven't really achieved much doing that, have I? This looks like not convincing. Uh, it's not convincing right now, is it? This position. And I'll try and get closer to the screen to sort of make the board a little bit bigger. So I'm going to move my head a bit closer to the screen. Okay, so f3 and then. Do I need to play f3? Why do I feel the need for f3? I do feel the need for f3 because f5 is also uh, a pain for f4 potentially, trapping my bishop in this configuration because I haven't given my bishop that reverse gear. I can use that g5 now again. Okay, so here, um, if I castle and accept the risk of the double pawns. For the moment, okay. Can I take her? Interesting change of pawn structure and a, an exciting opposite side castling game. So, creating some excitement from this opening. Um, I'll try and get that d3 square to work for me. Although that B file looks dangerous. Yeah, this this could be dangerous. Very oh crikey. A four is that too much to play A four? Too many weaknesses. I think I should do something like A four because otherwise everything's opening up against me. This looks a bit scary actually. Oh, that's too scary. Why have I done this? Mm. Yes, yeah, knight b4 check. Is one idea. If I play bishop f6 for a moment. And yeah, um, Queen B two. There's Bishop C four. Bishop F one. Oh crikey! This is already. There's already Bishop C four here. I can't really. Oh no. <laughs> um. Hmm. Can I get away with this? Yeah, this, this doesn't look nice. If I can get Bishop D3, but I don't know if I will be able to. That probably might be useful. All right, I was expecting Rook F1 actually. Um, Okay, uh, this knight b4 stuff. I mean, uh, there's bishop g2 on bishop f3. Right, there's rook h2. No, there isn't. Bishop e2, bishop d3. Uh, rook h2, I lose that. Bishop e2. On oh, knight, knight d3 for a moment. Uh, oh, I'm overloaded here. Yeah, it looks as I'm overloaded. Um, knight b4 and then rook f2, but maybe there's bishop e2, but it's not very pleasant at all. I can't play rook h2 because of rook f1. Uh, Yeah. And 
I just losing a piece here? That's the question. Uh, looks as though that's a really nasty pen. Oh, crikey. Bishop e2, queen b4. I can't take. Could I play queen d3? Uh, was that futile? It was queen c3 after. It looked pretty futile. Oh, I thought just queen takes b4. Is he letting me off? Or is that some of cheeky idea of d3 or something? Rook f2. I thought queen b4 was just winning there. And we can look at that after, but. Um, d3 is knight d3. Okay. So somehow I'm still on the board. For the moment, so I probably want to play rook c2 and queen d3. I think, yeah, his energetic b5 earlier uh, was really good. I think queen takes d3 there. On d3. Oh, I'm surprised he played that though. Because is there something here I'm missing? Let's not try and pre-move here. Um. I mm, I think there was a clear win with Queen B4 earlier because of this leaving that horrible pin, pin and win. I had a game against someone astronomically rated uh, a few days back and I released the pin I had and I realised after that, hang on, the pin was absolutely winning. Um, pins can be absolutely lethal. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take here... Um, and now I just need to stop potential checks. Can I go check here? Take here. Oh, okay, this is much better than anything I imagined. Um, but, okay, just check to win H3. Does that work? Right, I'll try and keep my past pawns. I think I need to speed up. Can I go here? Oh, and it's pre-move time anyway. Oh, I can take that. When I say pre-move time, it's good to try and keep conscious <laughs> of, of possibilities. Although I, I, when I often I don't, yeah, but I did on this occasion. But I think um, this pin was horrendous. I think it doesn't matter who you're playing. If you've got a nice pin, it's worth its weight in gold. Um, I think one aspect here was Rook F1 myself. I thought Rook F1 was winning for Bishop C4. I thought this was dangerous because if I ever take this, um, but apparently that's not. What's what is the most dangerous thing? Rook, okay, there's tactical possibilities uh, of check and rook f3, but okay, but here the pin aspect is that even rook f2 here? No, this is what happened. This is what happened. It's here. Queen takes b4 to me. Look, absolutely. Winning because if I take here, I'm left with this horrendous pin, and I don't know what I do there. That's just losing a piece. The problem here is also that I think if I move my queen, um, so if queen takes b4, if I move my queen here, I think there's queen c3, and it, that horrendous pin is just an overload. I think the pin could have been winning there. Don't remind the pens. 
Okay. Lucky there. Lucky escape. For me. Lucky escape for me. Okay. I I think I want to change the um, tone of the game compared to that one. When I say tone, I mean the initial kind of pattern set for the rest of it. So rather than the structure with C4 and E4, I'll go with this structure as a deviation from that. Um, the bishop at the moment is hemmed in, but is there a quick E5? Uh, I wonder if it's... All right, no, I'm, I'm going to unhem the bishop because I want to... I think the problem is uh, this pawn is, is a bit scary on D4. The frontal pressure. So I'm sort of using that pawn to shield this one. Um, why? Why uh, would he do that? Isn't there knight d5 here? Or is it too much simplification? Um, bishop d5, bishop d5, knight d4. At minimum, okay. Bishop b7, rook b8, and then rook b2 after. Uh, okay, I guess this this works well uh, to uh, simplify. On this, I've got something else. Bishop d5 instead, trying to gain a tempo after bishop d5, knight d5, on, tempo on the queen. If knight d4 there, um, maybe there's uh, something exotic um, to think about, like bishop e6, um, or bishop d4. Yeah, I think there might be something more exotic here on knight d4. Um, bishop d4, queen d4, bishop e6. Bishop e6, I'm thinking, is more exotic. I'm trying to get a tempo, another tempo on the rook. Um, there is bishop f7 here if that helps as well. Probably not. So I'll go with that tempo gain. I, I'm a pawn up magically after all that. Haven't we had games where I have no idea what's going on in the complications and I'm I lose control, but this is this is okay. This is okay. I mean, it's a pawn up at the moment. And can I just like try and win another pawn? Is that too uh, simple? Let's try and well, I've been invited to this king and pawn ending. A pawn up. That's very interesting. Uh, okay, I'll get my king to the center. And start pushing these guys. Crap passport. Uh, the the kings have to, has to go back, right? So I mean, he can play for this and try and win these pawns, but um, the king that's I pass pawn over there. Um, I can support it with King F4 if needed. Uh, not F6, G5, and if F7, I'm queening actually, so that is a protected pass pawn because F6, G5, F7 is queening. On the other hand, F6, King E6, G5 is a protected pass pawn. If you place H6, H4, I've got a protected pass pawn, which is usually a good thing, a protected pass pawn. Uh, I don't want to do this because the king's in that square. I think I'll just keep my, uh, as a Zugzwang weapon, that protected pass pawn. All right, yeah, that was that was intriguing. Okay, thanks, uh, Friedel. Okay, big big boy, uh, George, boy George, boy Archie. Okay. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. So this tango, tango, trying to create these dark square wings. Says, this is an annoying plan. This h4 h5. It says looking at the destination of night, and trying to kick it when it goes to g6. That is pretty annoying. I'm not sure it's the end of the world for this uh, variation, though. I've played this before. So bishop c5, d6. Uh, offering the double pawns um, is tempting because you know that knight g4 queen d2 I've had this in uh, with the board game and I didn't take up this possibility the thing is I mean bishop b6 there might be even d6 disruptive d6 I could play b6 but even again technically it takes and then d6 so in theory if I have the double pawns there there's another plan lurking beneath here which was untapped that I could actually play for a6 later and put my queen on a7 to hit e3. I'll, I'll go for this pawn, um, doubling the pawns with so the idea of trying to torture e3 later. So something like bishop d7, a6, and then later queen b8 to a7. Now you could say, well, there's always going to be knight d1. Yeah. That's true. Actually, if he castles here, there's knight f2, though, tactically, forking the rooks. But yeah, this pawn could could be targeted on that diagonal, basically, I think. Anyway, that's a nice g4 square here, because he's played h4. They can't kick that knight from g4 that easily. So I think I'm going to go with bishop d7, a6, and then later look forward to queen. Oh, hang on. This this is dangerous. Oh, okay. That's annoying. Mm. Okay, maybe I have to go back. All right, that's, that's good. Um, I don't want to lose that, I think. <laughs> oh, oh, I hate this decisions. Uh, okay, okay. I mean that was that was an interesting move. I hadn't considered. Um, yeah. Okay, Bishop D seven, A six, uh, sort of get along. Maybe A six, B five, and then B four to to try and play Knight takes uh, E four. So am I, am I threatening B four here? Right. Yes. Okay. It's getting a bit dangerous. I'll, I'll t it's getting dangerous, my king. Yeah. It's playing a very aggressive game here. Very aggressive. I could take and then b4 and hope for the best. I don't like this G file business, naughty business against my king. It's like open road against my king there. I don't like this particularly. On the other hand, winning the center pawn could give a nice perk of being able to move f5 later. But on the other hand, he's going to play bishop f5, isn't he? Uh, so it's going to get uh, scary, probably. This is a tempo gain on the queen. Queen g2, knight c5, bishop f5. It all starts to look really scary. Do I do that? Queen g2, there's f5. There's bishop f5, rook f5, queen e4 there. Uh, in that position, there's queen f6. Is it worth doing? Let's see, can I improve on that? Queen g2, f5, bishop f5. 
I can't improve on that, can I? Oh, he hasn't gone there anyway. I thought Queen G2 was more of a tempo gainer. Um, this Bishop H5 or Bishop F5 here for Rook G6. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, defensive measures needed. Oh, crikey. Bishop f5, rook f5, rook g6, king h7. Things like queen f8 would hold g7. If the queen comes to the g file, queen f7 to hold g6. I think queen f8 is a key move here. There's also rook f1, which is dangerous actually for white because that knight's covering d2. So rook f1 looks dangerous at least. All right, if rook f2 is support, oh, the knight, but he just takes that. Okay. Mm. Knight f6 to h5, is that crazy? It would support g7. This might not be entirely crazy. He's got a decentralized. Uh, knight over here. If I can look forward to rook f2 at some point. I think that's promising that that knight isn't doing something too dangerous immediately. Um, if he trebles knight h5 maybe. Because actually or knight e8. Is knight h5 better than knight e8? It does blockade that pawn. Um, but it is a tactical liability for rook g5. But maybe on rook g5 there's rook f2. All right, I'll, I'll bet on this one. Rook g5, is that a big deal? Do I not just play queen f7? And if rook f5, queen f5, the knight holds g7. Alright, I'll try and treble. This gives me the possibility of rook f1 to exchange off a rook. Right, thanks. Yeah, it looked dangerous actually. It looked pretty dangerous. Chuck, shark, f, shark off. Okay, okay. Um, I've played this one before. E four. Oh, that's extra provocative. I don't remember that necessarily. Is it? Could I transpose into um, a Sicilian defence? Moroxy bind. There was a gorgeous Moroxy bind game that Michael Adams played, uh, which I covered on the channel um, in the last British Championship. Um. He did this positional exchange sack for one or two pawns and the opponent throughout the game, Stephen Gordon, I don't think he had much counterplay. Uh, yeah, I think Adams played some really controlled positional masterpieces as though he was like Alpha Zero. I did say at the time it's like he's got an Alpha Zero style. So it's like no counterplay. And I think he likes, Mike Adams likes from what I can tell, Moroxy binds positions. He does really well, it seems, out of them. I might have covered about maybe like three or four of his Moroxy binds wins over the years. Yeah, it's it's quite a control mechanism for control enthusiasts. <laughs> control phrase. The Moroxy binds. <laughs> uh, 
am I am I really is it a delusion though because there are underlying weaknesses here I think one has to be cautious here uh, of things like d5 it looks as though d5 is out of the question at the moment but I'm wondering it's going to be played anyway isn't it rebellion of d5 I think what what is the risk factor of d4 one is this diagonal if I play king h1 does that slightly improve the position or is it a waste of time just trying to get the, the king off this diagonal because when you move the f pawn sometimes this diagonal is kind of weak okay uh let's see some simplification on d4 would that be <clears throat> terrible Knight d4, bishop d4, bishop d4, queen d4. I'm on looking at d6. <clears throat> I wonder what knight d5 does fundamentally to the position. Does it do anything? Is it worth considering? It might be. It looks like a cute move. Because celebrating the rook on, on the thing. I think I might be getting something back with interest here. At minimum, I think it fragments these two. This duo could end up being fragmented, even if he gets the pawn back. So I get my piece back. I hope, but I, I think it, I think there's a fragmentation there. Unlike fragmenting one's discs, I think one wants to fragment <laughs> the opponent's pawns. There's knight b6 or knight f6. Um, Knight f6 or knight b6. Yeah. If queen c7, I think I'd go back to d5. Yeah. Okay, so b4 here um, looks interesting. Possible. Um, any risk of this knight? It's a loose piece, sort of. Not that loose. Uh, just thinking. Uh, this can't get it back that easily at the moment. If I support it, I'm opening up that whole D file. That would be that would be nasty. Um, maybe A4, A5, just to entrench the knight. Actually, I want to wait for D5 or E5. E5. There's knight F5. Anyway, that looks juicy for that knight. Yeah. Okay. Is my e4 yet weak? Uh, it's going to be potentially a5 or knight d5. Maybe the knight can come back to d5 here. This this looks okay. If e f, there's bishop f4. I don't think it looks that scary for me at the moment with these knights. They look quite nice. E f bishop f4. Is it? Is it actually possible to play bishop g5 here for bishop f6? Bishop g5 looks interesting. Is Tactic almost c5 takes there's almost the tactic knight f6 for queen e7, but the knight's holding the rook. Otherwise, c5 would come in as a sort of potential tactic. Can I play b5 here though? And maybe try and use this c file or the two pass pawns over there. So a5 for a6. Mind you, takes and then that knight's loose. Unless I played queen d5. I could play queen d5 and if queen d5 ed. Or I could play bishop takes d8 as well. This bishop's not. No, it's protecting dark squares. I think a5 
allowing queen d5. All right, if I just drop this guy back. Right, drop this guy back. I think exchange here. And knight f5 again. That looks juicy for knight h6. Right, and then these pawns over here. Okay. Can I use that C file? All right. Okay, so e4 is vulnerable. Can I do this without? Oh, there's bishop d5. Oh my god. I just realized there was bishop d5. <laughs> yeah, this is why these, these positions are tricky. These positions are really tricky. I think he had bishop d5. Oh my god. Okay. Yeah, because my rook was kind of loose. Um, yeah, I can't take anything for granted in these Moxy buying positions. Um, on F6, it stops Rook H6. Okay, let's get my king off there. I'll take that. H6. There's a check there. I'll take that. Yeah, I think there was a possibility there, which is typical, typical uh, of Maroxy disasters, um, that as soon as anything's loose, as soon as you try and do anything with the position, like push some pawns. There's a disaster just waiting to happen, isn't there? Um, when I played this, I think there's this. Oh no, hang on! I don't take with the queen. No, E D. Okay, maybe E D. Okay, maybe maybe it was okay. It's possible on this occasion. It was okay. Okay, thanks. Pardon me. Mark Zeller. Hi there. Um. All right, so I've got an idea from Nakamura, uh, actually, or uh, this F6 idea, quirky idea against this. And can I grab this pawn now? Or is it too dangerous? And there's Queen H5 potentially. Why do I feel already in trouble here? <laughs> oh man, there's Queen H5, there's Bishop G8. Why, why do I already feel in trouble? Okay, I'll play this. I think there's Knight G6 on Queen H5. I dare to go there, okay. Yeah, knight g6 if I don't want to create too many extra weaknesses. I hope that's okay. c6 and d5. Is that too much? To aim for c6 and d5.
Crikey. Have I gone into something super dangerous here? Yeah, my king's still in the centre. Doesn't bode well. Bishop e6 and knight c6. Alright, I feel a bit better about that. The bishop not pointing down at my light square weaknesses. Uh, maybe there's king f7 there. So my queen's protecting the rook. Knight g6, hg. Queen's protecting the rook. It'd be nice to connect these guys up. Bishop e6 coming up. That would give me queen d7, bishop g4, bishop e6, potentially queen d7, bishop g4. Okay. There is d4 to think about. Oh, not too many choices there. It's giving me that H file though. Um, I'll make that piece protected and pointing at H2. I'll give the possibility of Bishop A6 here. There is another possibilities I've just noticed there g5 I can try and block that bishop which was the original intention c5 takes this check all right so that was a tactic c5 this is now a loose rook um so although I'm achieving some positional stuff there's tactical interludes here on loose pieces that need to be factored in uh, so I'm trying to make sure I'm not getting blown away tactically. If I can play bishop c6, and then c5 is then weak. Right, maybe bishop a8 here on bishop a3. And then that is not a, such a loose target. Um, f5 is weakening e5. Uh, there is maybe bishop f6 after that. Um, okay, that knight's too naughty, I think, on e4. Could I get to play maybe, maybe bishop d6 and queen h4? Bishop d6 here. And then queen h4. Okay, I don't like this uh, second rank possibilities. Okay, so queen, uh, there's rook b8 then. There's also eighth rank possibilities. Can I just go here to cover things? So b8, b7, uh, b6 is the odd one out. Um, can I, uh, uh, there's also e4 looks like a move. For e3, that looks like a, an idea. If there's rook b5, e4, and it wins uh, c5. Right, is he doing an exchange sack here if I did this with rook c5? It's possible. Maybe these pawns are dangerous. Oh, all right. Can I nab this guy? Is that completely stupid? Right, there's bishop c7 trying to gain a key tempo. I'm going to lose c5 instead. Yeah, at this rate, I'm going to lose c5 instead of a5. Okay, okay.
I've got technically a nice pass pawn there. I'll put it on a light square protected by the bishop. So the bishop without the counterpart is exciting to explore. There's no counterpart to this. Um, so any light square possibilities like queen a8 is on g2. And if f3, maybe bishop f3, gf, queen f3, queen g2, maybe there's queen d3. There's a load of passed pawns there. I, I think that's interesting. Um, maybe not yet then. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Bishop G two. Okay, it is, it is tempting just just to go for the king here. Yeah, I I, I think and then move the queen somewhere to F three or something or oh, C six. No, there's, there's Rook A six. Queen F three. There's Queen E two. Um, okay, there there is Queen E two. Uh, so what would be my point here? Maybe just taking a bishop h3. Try and go back for bishop f3 to so rook h1. Okay, this is a nasty pin though in the meantime for bishop b6. Right, at least I stopped rook b7. Um, I think there's rook c8 there anyway for the moment. Okay, e4 could be good. There's this pin's getting nasty. Shall I just try and unpin so I can move this bishop? I'll try and get this past pawn over here in the center. And supported here quite nicely with the bishop. All right, thanks for the game, Mark. Yeah, that was that was tricky actually. Uh scary in the opening as well. Okay. Right again. Okay. Let's see. Um I'll play um we had some fun with the Dutch defence the other week. Uh so yeah. Or French defence with knight c six. At least it's not the London system. <laughs> Anything but the torture of the London system. Uh Okay, so knight here. So knight f five. Is that possible? Knight f five. No, he just takes and then takes on d five. It's not possible, is it? Why have I got a scary position all of a sudden? Hmm. G six. Now knight f five, or h not knight. Okay, there's always g takes here. If h five, yeah, it's I'm improvising now. H five. Does it, okay, okay. Can I do this? I think I'll have to take the pawn because I, I still got to support things uh, over here. Is there knight d4 in this position? Knight d4, is that interesting? Queen e7, there's um, dangers with rook h7. Oh, okay. Bishop d7, try and just develop pieces. Um, queen e7, rook h7, there's queen f8 though. I think I need to develop some pieces, but mind you, rook h7 is such a pain. Uh, I think I'll need my queen on f8 to be able to play bishop d7 in castle queen side.
There's another possibility of rook g7 check, king d7. Stop that b4. Oh, okay. Um, if I took the or well, bishop b6, maybe bishop b6. On bishop e3, I think there's knight c2. Okay. Um, bishop d7. On rook h7, queen f8, I think I have knight e No, I don't. The knight's holding f3. That's not a pin, really. Is it? Um, on the other hand, queen f8 doesn't seem to lose immediately here except rook f7 oh, it does um there's two pieces for the queen it might actually be compensation not ideal but um well there's queen c5 though hang on should i wait for rook f7 or play queen c5 i'll, I'll wait for rook f7 why would I want to wait for rook f7 though? Isn't there knight e5 here for queen f3 and bishop e3? This works now. That's a liability. Knight e5, d takes, I mean f takes, queen f3, knight f3, bishop e3. It's bishop f3, queen f4, queen f4, knight d3, bishop e3, f takes, bishop g5. Yeah, there's queen f4, queen f4, knight d3. It's not, it's not a major check, I believe. Let's see this position, queen f4, queen f4, knight d3. He's protecting f4. I don't think bishop b5 check changes things. This c6. So bishop e6, queen e3, queen f4. There is bishop g6. I don't know if bishop g6 changes things. There's knight g6 protecting the queen. No, there isn't. There's queen e6. Okay, there's king d8 there. Bishop g6, king d8. Because if bishop g6, knight g6, there's queen e6. Right. We'll just take things off. I do seem to be a bishop up. Um. Although I think I needed some caution, which I'm not expressing here uh, any caution. Um, rook d7. Am I losing too many pawns for a start? Bishop e4 interest. Um, I think I want to move this g pawn. 36 seconds is not long. Okay, the g pawn.
Is the Jeep one any good? 30 seconds, okay. Start pushing it. Twenty five seconds. King to G three, King to H two, twenty two seconds. It's not long. Rook F one, Rook E four, and he's still got pawns. Oh, is, is that we have Rook F three? Rook D three. Fifteen seconds. Uh, yeah, some. Uh, I think my uh, opening was terrible. <laughs> so, I don't know. It's just random tactics, holding my position afloat. Like ninety-five. One moment ninety-five doesn't do anything, and then the next moment, because of bishop e three, it does anything. So it's it's good to bear in mind the forcing moves because you never know if you're aware of all the forcing moves. There's there's a, some ridiculous configuration happens. It seems, and then all of a sudden. Uh, it's useful. So ninety five in itself, when I first looked at it, was just ridiculous. But that's quite often I find that quite often the case in chess. Um so yeah, this awareness of the forcing moves, uh, and then and then be able to spring those out uh, when the configuration changes. Okay, so um, if I play b5 um, for b4 for knight e4, Okay, so b4 for knight e4. Mind you, I'm, I'm going to lose b4. I could I could try and support this on weakening light squares. Okay, trade offs, trade offs, trade offs, trade offs. Weakening light squares. Mind you, the knight's a bit stranded now. I have supported that, but not just supporting that pawn. The knight's a little bit uh, awkward. Has to reroute. There is knight e4 here now, um, or b3. I think knight e4. If queen d3, I'm wondering knight c5. If bishop c5, bishop c5, I'm holding up b4. I didn't think that was an entirely big deal. Have my king on f8. I thought knight c5 here is nice. If I can support b4, so bishop c5, bishop c5, supporting b4. Okay, so um, b3, there's knight c1. Um, he is putting pressure on b4 at the moment. Um, mm. What to do? With this rook over here, this doesn't look too clever, does it? Maybe I should just take, just dissolve that viability. It might it might be useful. There's some squares are weakened a bit. So f5 and queen f6 maybe. Uh huh. There is a weakness to the last move there. Bishop a6. 
is invited. If knight b5, well, then maybe rook b8. I'm hoping this is okay. Right. I'll just stop my pieces being all loose here. I'll just do this for a moment, just in case. And f four is that ridiculous? Queen f six, maybe. But and my king could go to h seven to connect the rooks up. Mind you, if he unpins knight c seven, almost, almost. Bishop c five. If bishop c seven, knight c seven. Have to be concerned about c seven, I guess. I could just take on b5 if the queen moves, uh, just to relieve this pressure. Um, isn't that also knight a4? But also, okay, I I think I I could just if I just take there as a prelude to dark square play. If you take off, I noticed that from the neural network games. Losing a light square bishop, I should look for dark square opportunities, I think. More. There is f4. Maybe that's a kind of dark square opportunity. f4 here. But I'm playing without this rook at the moment. Alright, so that looks solid enough. Isn't that E? There isn't E4 there. I can hit D5. And maybe trade off queens. Because that D5 is going to be weak after. And I've potentially got mobile pawns here. So if he exchanges off queens, I come back hitting D5. With mobile pawns supported by the bishop, that should be good dark square play, counterplay. Uh, shouldn't it? Okay, no, he's on uh, c5. If I took, no, it takes. If I prepare um, that, so queen takes, knight takes. I still think that pawn is by itself on d5. Oh. Oh, that's 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 nasty. Oh, okay. Things are getting nasty here. I can't move the bishop because of yeah. I've got to move this because of c7. Yeah. Uh, okay. Can I contest this um, file before it's too late? Oh. Oh no, okay, I don't want to lose that pawn. I don't want to lose that one either. Oh dear. Uh, uh the thought of being repetitive, but hang on a sec. I, I want this I don't want to lose my pawns. So okay, king f six, e four and king e five. Can I make progress like that? That unpins. E four no, I can't play king e five, I'll drop the knight. So what do I do in this position? E4, knight g6 to e5. Yeah, if the rook ever moves, there's knight d5. E4, knight g6 to e5. Where, where, where is that going? Okay. Oh, no.
<laughs> no. Okay. I, I've I'm cracking here a bit. That was a really good move, Rook D4. I can play this, can I? I think yeah, time pressure crept in there, uh, but no, uh, that rook d4. Yeah, I was cracking there a bit. Uh, I was trying to hold all the squares, try and make progress as well. It's too much to try and make progress and hold everything at the same time. Uh, okay, Atlanta Gambit. Um, Oh, I don't like Tarash that much. It's very active, isn't it? It's a very active opening. The Tarash defense. See, but Tarash. Knight b3. I assume bishop e3, queen b2 doesn't look like an entirely brilliant idea. But on the other hand, it looks as though maybe like rook c1 and there's bishop b4. I must be ending up losing material. And if knight b5, a6, bishop e3, d4, knight d4, queen b2. That's slightly different. Um, okay, I don't want to lose on time thinking about this position particularly. So knight b3, d4. What about just... If I want to play safe, what about just e3 for a moment? Just to be boring. E3. I'm, I'm closing up the bishop. I'm just just using up too much time here in your opening. Let's use this bishop on this diagonal. Um, queen d3 might be... Or f3. Maybe f3. Bishop A3, G4 later. Fascinating. Bishop H5, G4. G4 might have something going for it here. G5 and then F4. Where do I take? Oh, remove the liability on the C file, I think. Oh, it does give rise to bishop a3, maybe bishop c5. Okay, so put the king away. We'll go for this. Where does he go? Knight h5, there's f4, there's g6. Does he really want that? Because. Isn't there bishop d5? There's bishop c6, I guess. Isn't there like queen b3? Okay, I'll, maybe, maybe that's okay. Queen b3 looks at f7. Bishop c6, queen b3. It's a bit airy, my position. On the other hand, that knight is not amazing at the moment. It can go to f5 later. Hmm. Oh, 
Oh, okay, let's just go back to this line, bishop c6, or not. Okay, where does he want not with that bishop? Uh, queen b3 looks like, uh, try and simplify queen b3, looking at f7. And the bishop has to stand guard on e3 here. So queen c7 maybe, bishop d2 for rook c1, or queen b7 on queen c7. Is that too greedy? Queen c7. Uh, queen b7. If... Um, Isn't that just bishop f7 here winning an exchange? Not only that, there's another possibility here of d5 and bishop b2, but there's knight g7. I think I'll just take the exchange. And use the other rook because that one's holding a4. If I play rook c7, um, I can't use b1 at the moment. But rook c7 looks um, mm, d5 for bishop c3 looks looks good. d5 knight c5 could be a bit of a pain. I'm hoping bishop c3 and bishop e5 or something. Bishop d4, that cements e3 again. Oh, there's knight b3, okay, bishop b6, it's simplifying. I've got a load of pawns there. Anyway, knight b3, bishop b6. Well, accidents do happen, and that's okay. But it's not such a big deal, I hope. There's rook d1. Because I got to support d5 as priority. In fact, d6, d7 looks really dangerous. Because that bishop's on d8. d6, right, getting the tempo again where possible. So d7. All right, rook c2, rook c7. All right, this takes in d7 here. This looks very comfortable now. Keep the king out. I think protected past pawn soon. F five coming up. Protected past pawn. All right. Thanks for the game. Uh, at learn to gambit. Um. Oh, there's only two minutes to go, so I think I might call it there. Um, yeah, thanks. Um, if you want to check out the discount screen, um, yeah, remember, premium members uh, get to challenge everyone, including Magnus Carlsen. Uh, vouch code Kings Crusher there. Um, so Kings Crusher, 15% off premium membership. I uh, hope you got something from that. Um, key points today. Uh, pin doesn't matter who you're playing doesn't matter if you're playing grandmaster someone astronomical rating as i learned a few days ago i had this pin and i just released it pins are absolutely lethal creatures tactically uh forcing moves are also lethal creatures just find that right situation for to pounce your forcing move that you've seen which although outrageous in one position very soon after could actually do something so um uh, yeah, I hope uh, you got something from this session. Thanks very much. And um, see you uh, next week. Okay, Happy New Year. Thanks very much.